you can save it. Yeah, all right. Good, good, good. Have a seat. Please. This is a wonderful occasion for me. I have with me, <laughs> which I, as you can see, my well-worn uh, uh, little folder here. If you look right at the top of this folder, you'll see my card. This certifies Neil Abercrombie, room 324, Moore Hall, UH Manoa, is a member of the you know, Hawaii United Federation of College Teachers, chartered by the American Federation of Teachers, AFL-CIO, Dave Selden, President, signed by President Floyd Swan, October 1974, 44 <coughs> years ago, almost to the, to the date. Uh, this was my, uh, my uh, union card. Uh, I was a uh, Graduate teaching assistant, here it is. <laughs> Graduate teaching assistant at the uh, University of Hawaii in, in uh, the American Studies Department, and uh, was uh, honored to be a member of the negotiating team uh, for the the uh, the uh, United Federation of College Teachers, the AFT unit at that time. And uh, towards the first contract uh, offering to the to the faculty, and uh, one that had to be redone. As a matter of fact, we went at it more than once, and uh, as a result of my efforts there, participated in the in the in the uh, labor movement here in Hawaii a little bit more formally, of course. And at uh, subsequent, while I was still on. Uh, as a teaching assistant and still on the board of uh, the AFT at the UH, uh, elected to the executive committee of the F state of AFL-CIO, nominated, I'm very pleased to say, by former, now passed away, uh, laborers, uh, 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 President uh, Elmo Sampson. And uh, so it's a really, really special occasion for me today to be able to preside, if you will, at the uh, signing of uh, this historic contract. Um, I'll let, leave, let some of the other speakers maybe uh, talk about some of the details of it. Uh, suffice to say from, from my point of view that, that uh, uh, we think it was historic, we think it was, uh, we hope it's precedent setting. Uh, in the sense that it gives us the opportunity not to slip backwards. Uh, we came into a situation four years ago uh, in which uh, unfunded liabilities and uh, uncertainty, uh, a severe deficit uh, in, our, in our operating budget, uh, all confronted uh, uh, particularly our public workers with questions of, uh, of labor savings that had to be put into effect. And I indicated at that time if we would all stick together, most of us did, uh, that uh, we could come through it and that we would be in a position then to, to do some really good things, some great things uh, for Hawaii and for uh, hardworking public employees as well. The, uh, this uh, has resulted in this contract that we have today. Um, I'm very pleased that that uh, the executive director and chief negotiator, J.N. Musto, is here, who's also going to be bringing his career to a close. Uh, not, not right today, but uh, with this contract. And then maybe once it's signed, he'll be out the door. And, and Dave Duffy, been a good friend and, and, a, and a, a worthy successor to, to uh, Floyd Swan, I can tell you. He'd be very happy to know that you were in charge, David, uh, and Dave Lastner. Uh, a product of the UH as well, a part of the UH family is now the president of, of the university and uh, uh, not substituting for but, but rather uh, appearing on behalf of the entire board and the chair of the board, uh, Jan Sullivan, uh, uh, 
Randy Moore could not be with us today. Jen is both an old friend and a longtime uh, supporter of the UH, whose dad was also involved with uh, setting policy uh, at the university and making a commitment to the university. So this is a, a wonderful group of people. Our, on a, from our side, a negotiation was handled uh, more than ably by an old friend who came from uh, the private side of the union movement, uh, from the seafarers, been with them more than a quarter of a century, the seafarers union. Uh, Neil Dietz uh, could not have handled things more smoothly, more ably, uh, could not have set a tone uh, and a context for uh, any more positively than, uh, uh, than was established, in fact, to, to help to achieve this historic uh, signing today. There's nearly 4,000 faculty members represented on 10 campuses throughout the UH when I came in to the university first in 1959. Of course, we, most of these campuses did not exist. The university was essentially at Manoa and that was essentially the, that was, uh, that was the core basis of the entire university. And uh, so uh, the, uh, since 1974, UPA, uh, uh, the uh, University of Hawaii Professional Assembly, has been the exclusive representative agent. So since that, that, that those beginning times there in 1970, uh, a faculty union has been part and parcel of and central to uh, the, but not only the core mission of the university, but in representing not just the interests of the faculty, but the interests of academia and the university and its entire family, right from the very beginning. Um, so, uh, there are highlights of this. I'll just cite them very quickly. I'm sure the others will maybe get more specific. A 4% increase uh, starting July uh, 2015, another uh, across the board 4% increase the following year. It addresses minimum salaries that needed to be done uh, for a long time, believe me, as a lecturer and a teaching assistant in the university system. I, I know how important that is. And addresses health sh uh, insurance premiums uh, to uh, get us into a situation where we can assure everyone that we'll be able to meet our, our obligations. Um, I uh, wanted to get a uh, early agreement. I felt public education uh, not only was a top priority for me, but I thought uh, the, this could lead the way towards uh, uh, setting a standard for uh, uh, public uh, union contract negotiations uh, uh, as, they, as they arise and are arising right now. And I feel that if, if, uh, if this contract indeed sets the standard, that we'll be able to meet our obligations uh, in terms of health care premiums, in terms of pensions, in terms of keeping the budget uh, balanced, and at the same time uh, recognizing the hard work and the worthiness of all public employees, uh, not least among them, of course, the members of the faculty. It's a positive and historic agreement, therefore. It shows that collaboration is possible when people are willing to put forward the effort and exhibit the maturity required of all parties in order to make collective bargaining more than just a phase. So I want to commend uh, J.N. Musto, retiring after 35 years. Uh, this is his last negotiation with UPA, although I'm sure that uh, he'll be more than readily be available. Um, and uh, you'll notice uh, the, uh, the law requires that we have, am I correct, Neil, three uh, agreements, right? Um, I mean, it has to be signed three times. We're going to have all, all the parties come up and sign. But you'll notice there's four copies here. And so uh, uh, I'll uh, uh, be signing a fourth copy after I ask the, the folks that, whose names will have to appear here, which will include Jan for the Regents, uh, it will include Dave Lastner for the University uh, itself as UH President, it will include John Morton, my old friend, uh, back from American Studies days, right John? All the all way, way back there, 44 years. We, we, together. we go back uh, th those 44 years and go back to the Union negotiation days <coughs> together. Uh, and who's now uh, a UH spokes spokesperson on, the, on, on this occasion, but of course has been instrumental in the community college system that did not exist when we were first pitching it. Uh, and uh, uh, J.N. Musto, of course, and, and Dave Duffy, 
myself and, and Neil Dietz will be signing uh, these three documents together and then we'll be all signing the fourth document. And the reason we're going to have a fourth document is that uh, the law may not require it, but uh, the human heart requires it. And that fourth copy, official copy, will be going to John Radcliffe. John was there right from the get-go in terms of collective bargaining, teaching, education, higher education, and uh, education from K, K through right through graduate school. If there's anybody for the past four decades uh, who represents the very best, uh, not just in, in terms of his humanity, but in terms of his understanding of what's required to make collective bargaining a noble endeavor uh, and a, a, a civilized uh, uh, activity that takes what otherwise could be contentious uh, and, uh, and confrontational and turn it in, into a process that leads us all not just to be better people, but to have a, an educated and informed uh, uh, community worthy uh, of the word democracy. If there's anybody who represents it in my mind, it's John Radcliffe. And I hope, John, that when we're concluded here, that you'll come up and receive on behalf of your grateful friends here and uh, uh, this uh, official copy of, of this contract uh, to represent from our hearts to you uh, what it is we feel for you and the reg high regard with which you're held. So, uh, with that, uh, I'm going to ask uh, JN, I think, first to come up and say a few words to be followed by Dave Duffy, Dave Lastner, and John Morton, and then Jan, finally. Thank you, Governor. Appreciate it. Um, again, I think that I would echo the, uh, the comments the Governor has made. This is, an ex this is historic because I think this agreement achieves after 40 years the goal that we wanted, which was that the union is become a cooperative partner with the university administration and the university community in general, and that collective bargaining is a method that is inspired by Chapter 89, where it says it is the modern way of decision making. Um, after all of these years, I think we have we've we've achieved a level where we can disagree but not be disagreeable. Uh, and I am confident under the leadership of, of President Lasner that, that that is what is going to continue in the future after I'm gone and, and others uh, who are going to follow us. Uh, John Radcliffe, uh, as many of you know, was my associate executive director. But before that, he was the executive director of the Hawaii State Teachers Association. Uh, and that's the position he held when I came from the mainland to take on the position of the executive director. Um, John, John didn't give me, you know, uh, much uh, credence for survival at the time that I, uh, <laughs> I set foot here, along with a good friend of mine who was vice president in charge of bargaining at the time, Harold Masamoto, oh. <laughs> who I just saw last week. Uh, I don't think either one of them gave me more than two years. And, uh, but from there, uh, John retired from UHPA, went on his own, formed his own company, Radcliffe & Associates, which has been then representing UHPA in the legislature and beyond. And John has been instrumental in many of the settlements that we have achieved over the years. And that's because it is an absolute fact that negotiations in the public sector must, by by form of our democracy, be a political activity. We not only have to encourage the employer to settle, we have to encourage the representatives of the public at large to accept it. And they embodied in the president, or I mean, pardon me, in the state legislature and the governor's office. So over the years, it has been a wonderful partnership between John and myself. Uh, we are more than just colleagues. And it is with real pleasure, and I want to thank you for allowing John to have a copy of our signatory page. Thank you, Jay. 
statement. Thank you. Very much. Please, Ed. say as you will and then sign the contracts. I'm, I'm sort of humbled. I've uh, uh, been in the company of grown-ups <laughs> uh, and people who I really admire. And uh, the negotiations to me were one of the more pleasant and, and progressive and uh, productive things I've been involved in. The, uh, the negotiations were basically getting to yes. What did we need? What did the uh, administration need? And what did the faculty need and the university? And so I appreciate everybody uh, for all their help. Uh, and the other thing that I uh, just want to say quickly is this is a very good contract for the faculty, uh, particularly our younger faculty. Uh, they're having trouble making ends meet. This will help them. Uh, we need to retain them because we need, we're transitioning. We have a lot of members retiring. And so the university needs to keep its young growth and uh, have the forest continue, as it were. So thank you. And thank you, Governor. Thank you, David. Cool. So I'll just start here. <laughs> and there, Jeff, you're right next to Jay. Yeah. Okay. the comments about the goodwill that has gone into um, this day um, from I think the first day I was um, identified as the interim president JN came visiting and said we've got to settle early um, in my first uh, calls on um, um, people who I thought could help the university I visited with the governor within a week or two and he said to me we've got to settle early and um, the reason that we're here today is the team that we had uh, working with Jan, with John, with David, myself. Um, it was truly a collegial process in, in all that we mean by that word. Um, looking at what, how we would proceed. Um, our first meeting with Jan, he showed up with a framework for how we could move forward. And from there we moved into the specific issues, what we would be able to um, succeed with. and what bigger issues we m might want to put off and um, one of the elements of this agreement that the uh, governor has summarized is that some of those hard issues we've agreed to work on again collaboratively during the off season uh, to meet some of the needs of both the faculty and the university to move forward um, and let me also thank and acknowledge john radcliffe i guess as we talk about the 40 or 50 year old relationships I actually believe I have the oldest connection to John of anyone in this room. He was the debate coach at the high school <laughs> right across town from mine in the same school district. And by the way, one of the finest debate coaches in the state. Um, my school, and I was a debater, if we had a faces team, it was um, certain death. It was only a matter of <laughs> how badly we would lose, not whether or not we would lose. So um, thanks for your help and support in, of the university in particular over this last legislative session. John. Right in the middle. Uh, President Lasner will sign uh, uh, this, uh, these uh, contracts right in the middle, which is only appropriate for what he's doing right now. <laughs> <laughs> he's caught in the middle right straight through. Next, my old friend John Morton. Great to be um, with you today, John. Oh, it's my pleasure. The university for the last six years as the state has been going through some pretty tumultuous times. 
the budget reductions that the state has had to endure, um, pay reductions, other changes that the university has experienced. But through all that, the faculty and the university have strived to try to make sure that the university did serve the state, that we accommodated more students despite the budget reductions, that we did attract more outside research dollars to help the state's economy recover. And so as we looked ahead to the next contract, we really wanted something that would help stabilize that. That just as we have worked hard for the past six years, that we could work hard going forward to make sure the university plays its proper role um, for the citizens of the state of Hawaii. I think this contract does that. I thank Jayen, John, the governor, Neil, in helping us craft this contract that I think does indeed provide a solid, fair base for faculty and their salaries, while at the same time addressing some of the issues we wanted to address on the administrative side. So I'm very happy to sign this contract on behalf of the university as well. Thank you, John. Thank you, John. Great pleasure. Jan, speaking for the Regents. I didn't really do Jan, thank you. I truly didn't know what I was getting into. When I came <laughs> to do this. Um, so I would just add, on top of what John said, um, one of the goals of the board this year has been to stabilize our budget and to provide predictability and reasonableness to what we're trying to do. So this is a big step forward, and we owe a lot of gratitude to everyone that was involved in negotiating this. Um, I am very humbled and sincerely honored to be in the room with the governor and these gentlemen who Thank have you, clearly dedicated their lives, really on behalf of the University of Hawaii. Thank you. Thank you, Jim. Thank you. Here, right at the top. Thank you. And I mentioned uh, that uh, obviously there. The executive has to have its side in collective bargaining, as J.N. indicated. I, I was part of the legislative process that, that uh, perfected, if you will, Chapter 89, which is the, the, laws, uh, the law regulations and, and uh, policies which, which govern collective bargaining in the state of Hawaii. Uh, I was making a, 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 I recall very, very uh, clearly making my pitch uh, with regard to uh, who was a real employee, <laughs> uh, the, the 20 hours, uh, the, the entire world associated with, uh, with academic enterprise. And uh, uh, someone who uh, I had absolute and complete confidence in uh, was operating from our side, carrying the interests of the state, that is to say the people of Hawaii as, as represented in the, in the governor's office. Uh, as I indicated earlier, he came from from uh, the uh, Maritime Trades Union, the Seafarers Union, uh, with, a, with an ancient and honorable history uh, on, the, uh, on, uh, on all issues and matters to deal with the sea, uh, down to the sea and ships. Uh, the human factor in that was represented by uh, Neil Dietz uh, for over a quarter of a century, and the state of Hawaii was more than ably represented uh, by Neil Dietz in these negotiations. Neil? You blush. <laughs> As you can tell, Mr. Dietz is work oriented. <laughs>
I have seen collective bargaining in all of its faces, all of its sides. This contract is representative of the best of the process, and I was proud to be associated with it. Thank you, Neil. Well, there only needs... Be one more signature. This brings to a close 55 years of my life. I came in uh, September of 1959 to the University of Hawaii. The University of Hawaii has been my life for 55 years in terms of the commitment and the understanding of what that commitment is all about in terms of the values represented at the university, the values of our Aloha State, the values of the Aloha Spirit. I recall, and some here are familiar with this story, that as a young teaching assistant in the sociology department then, I was uh, called by President Snyder, Harry Snyder, physics professor who had become president of the university, invited to come see him in his office. I was quite surprised. I didn't know what transgression I'd committed that would, would cause me to be called to the president's office. And uh, I walked into his office at now, what is now Snyder Hall uh, there, and uh, the president got up from his desk, came around, put his hand out and said, welcome to the world of academia. It was personal. Now I suppose the university's grown so much now. We had uh, there were cows out there in the, in the back. We were grazing cows and and uh, on, uh, up where the Korean Study Center is now. And I doubt that uh, David Lastner is going to be able to get to every teaching assistant in ten ten campuses or every lecturer in ten campuses and 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 give a personal welcome. But what that represented to me was that the world of the mind and that which separates us from the other species, our capacity to make judgments, to draw conclusions and act on them, and to accumulate the wisdom of the past, hopefully to be able to send it on to those who will take responsibility for our future. There is no higher calling of a human being than to accumulate knowledge, to acquire knowledge, and to pass on that knowledge. If there's anything that distinguishes us and our species, it's that capacity and by extension then that responsibility. To be able to sign this contract today as governor it closes us out that 55 years of commitment. I could not be more humbled and proud at the same time. Humbled that I had the opportunity to have wonderful colleagues, to always be encouraged, to have the best education. It's so easy to criticize. I will tell you, my graduate education at the University of Hawaii was as good or better than anybody, any place in the world. The best professors, the wonderful colleagues, the, the atmosphere and the context of, of learning could not have been more positive. It's been something that I've carried with me all my life. And to the degree and extent that this contract will it not only exemplifies those values, but gives us the opportunity to extend that legacy of high achievement and commitment and determination and perseverance that the University of Hawaii represents. To that same degree, then, uh, this signature is an extension of my past commitment, my present commitment, and my future commitment to the university and all it means to Hawaii and its future.
John, I'd like to present you with this newly minted, <laughs> freshly signed contract of UPA, University of Hawaii, and the people of Hawaii, and present you with the first official copy God bless uh, to be seen you. anywhere. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Governor. Thank you, everybody. This is sort of an end of an era. There are people in this room, the two of us anyway, and others, who represent nearly the entire history of collective bargaining in the state of Hawaii. I bargained my first contract 48 years ago. I bargained all across this country, most of it here in Hawaii. I was the guy that came in and ran the strike in Memphis right after the AFSCME strike in which Martin Luther King was killed. That was a rough day and a rough scene. And coming out to Hawaii was been an absolutely wonderful experience for collective bargaining. You know, this place is the best when it comes to doing labor relations in the best possible way. When I say I've got 48 years of experience at this, I want to tell you that three things come to mind, three words come to mind when you talk about collective bargaining. Honor, respect for others, and trust. You have to be honorable. When you give your word, you have to keep it. You can't go back on it. You can't think it over. Once you've given it, you've given it, and you're stuck with it, it better be good. Respect and respect for others is very important because if you don't have it, if you can't show it, you can't get a deal. You can't settle anything, you know? And that leads to trust. And when people talk about collective bargaining, they always talk about the, oh, all the fights and the conflicts and the wars and the strikes and so forth. But that's not how you get a settlement. You get a settlement ultimately by coming to an agreement. And to come to an agreement, you have to have trust. And that's what we've always had. I've been so proud to be executive director of HSTA for 13 years. I'm still the longest serving executive director I think they ever had. You know, I was so proud to be the debate coach at Rich East High School <laughs> when David was at Rich Central uh, and, and, and in high school then in those days. Wonderful kid too. So about that. And so very pleased to be associated with UHPA since 1988 and ongoing. And having a part, uh, a small part perhaps, but a part in the history of this wonderful, wonderful state. So this is uh, my, my brother J.N.'s last contract. It's mine too. And I say thank you to everybody for everything that we've done but especially to Neil Abercrombie. Neil Abercrombie has been one hell of a guy to work with, a great guy to work with over time. And uh, history, I think, is going to find that in Neil Abercrombie, we've had a great governor. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. Wait, wait, wait. Okay, right here. Standing in your tiptoes. One, two, three.